listen to Jesus? I am, but I am, not will be. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believest thou this? And now, the preaching of the gospel with James Watkins. Seeing that his divine power hath granted unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, uh, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and virtue, whereby he hath granted unto us his precious and exceeding great promises, that through these you may become partaker of the divine nature. That's from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He hath granted unto us his precious and exceeding great promises. That's correct. Uh, through what means? The written, revealed Word of God. He has provided us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So let's talk for a few moments about the promises of the gospel. We've discussed the power of the gospel in time past, but uh, the promises of the gospel? You know, some of God's promises are unconditional. Oh, in the area of His preparation to reconcile fallen humanity to Himself. If, for instance, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, you recall, God made a promise, Genesis 3, verse 15, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. He, of course, is addressing the devil there, Genesis 3, 15, but that's unconditional. There will come one of the seed of woman who would bring to naught the power of Satan. That's not contingent upon anything I do or do not do. That is an unconditional promise of the Almighty. And we find another such unconditional promise over in 1 Corinthians 15 at verse 22. As in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. That's interesting, isn't it? Regardless of whether or not we are good or bad, or righteous or wicked, you're going to be raised from the dead. Eh, because that uh, goes right on to say that Christ must reign till all His enemies have been placed under His feet. The last enemy to be abolished is death. When will death be abolished? When there is no one dead. But when will that occur? At the resurrection. All who have lived from Adam until the end of time will come out of the tomb. That's unconditional. Most to everlasting ruin a few to everlasting life. And that's according to the Lord's teaching in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. But righteous or wicked, all will come forth out of the tomb, unconditional. However, God's promises to the individual uh, with rel uh, relative to our salvation, our freedom from the burden and the guilt of sin, oh, these are uh, conditional. That uh, has always been true. Uh, someone says, well, well, why so? Well, you see, we're made in the image and the likeness of God. There's a great deal there that though we've discussed it from time to time, uh, many simply do not understand. And he created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. That's verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1. So we're made in the image and the likeness of God. Uh, that's correct. However, Jesus said, you remember, John chapter 4, verse 24, that God is a spirit. Oh, and the Lord also said in Luke chapter 24, verse 39, that a spirit does not have flesh and bone. Well, just, just a moment. We're made in the image and the likeness of God, right. Uh, but God is a spirit, that's correct. A spirit doesn't have flesh, right. We don't look like God. Why, certainly not. How then are we made in the image and the likeness of God? Friends, we are immortal spirits possessed of free moral agency. God has never interfered with that fact. He, he never uh, overrides my independence of choice, of thought. Have you ever wondered about the Garden of Eden? I mean, it, it's perfect. Everything essential to man's happiness is available. In the midst of the garden, the tree of life. They could eat on a regular basis, live forever. That's wonderful. Also, in the midst of the garden, 
There was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, God warned Adam and Eve, verse 17 of Genesis chapter 2, Thou shalt not eat thereof. Therefore, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So then there were two trees in Eden, right? One for life, one would result in death. That's correct. Why were those two trees in there? We're made in the image of the likeness of God. As that we're immortal spirits, we'll live forever. Possessed our free moral agency. You make your own choice. Oh, God give us, gives us the basis for making the right choice, but it's up to me. It's my choice to be made. Now, I don't have two trees today, but there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You'll be in one or the other eternally. You see, it's appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment, Hebrews 9 and verse 27. Life, friends, as we've often said, is not serious. No, life is deadly serious. We pass this way but once. We meet none coming back to right any wrongs or to correct any mistakes. Friends, we need to give our lives in humble obedience to the Lord in full recognition of God's grace and mercy, eh, the promises of God. So in the gospel, all of my needs are fulfilled. Oh, but they are conditional. I need to think about that. Eh, think, for instance, uh, of the promise of freedom from the burden and the guilt of sin. That's wonderful, isn't it? What was that uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 1? Uh, what shall we say to these things? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Wait, wait a minute, Paul. You say we are dead to sin? Right. You see, we've been buried with Christ. That's what he goes on to explain. Don't you know, brethren? that all we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death, and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also might walk in newness of life. And if you've been planted in the likeness of His death, you shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that the old body of sin is done away, that we should live no longer uh, therein. W wait a minute now. When by faith... We're baptized into Jesus Christ, the gospel being the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. We die to the love of sin. We die to the practice of sin. Dead to the love and practice of sin, we are buried with the Lord. Right. How does that take place? In scriptural baptism. Uh, all we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead, uh, so we also uh, come forth out of the water of tomb, free from the limitations of the flesh, uh, free from the guilt of sin. That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, somebody says, well, I'm still the same person. I still have the same thoughts, and I says, but uh, there's a vast difference if indeed uh, you are walking by faith. Now, you could uh, join this or join that or hear some false teaching and you could be dipped in the water. That would have nothing to do with it at all. No, no. It's a matter of hearing the Son of God and by faith giving your life in obedience to His will. There's one baptism, Ephesians 4, verse 5. Ah, yes. So then when by faith one is scripturally uh, baptized into Jesus Christ, oh, then he is free uh, from sin. On occasion, someone will say, well, I, I do that, and I understand it's true, and I know what you're saying, and I read the Scripture, and, but I just can't live it. Right, right, I always agree. Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly true. You, you can't make it. Uh, it's out of the question, uh, the way you're looking at it. You see, I'm in the flesh. And Paul explains in Romans chapter 7, with the flesh, we serve the law of sin. I, I just can't rise above on the power of my own initiative or ability, uh, the guilt. I, I, no, 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 no. Uh, salvation is the free gift of God. It's a matter of uh, grace, uh, unmerited uh, favor. Oh, but it's received by faith. Right, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 8 and 9. We understand that, for by grace have you been saved through faith. But, but when one is baptized into Christ, oh, he comes forth under the protective custody of the blood of Christ. We've noted that in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now listen to this. And it is a continuous action. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. That is uh, linear. That's a continuous uh, action. Keeps on cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, but now somebody says, Preacher, preacher we're sinners. That's what he said. You just read right on. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. Oh, through the end of the chapter. Sure, we're in the flesh. Yes, thoughts are not always pure. Right. Sometimes we make mistakes. Yes, but if you're endeavoring through your regular study of God's Word, from the heart to comply with His instruction. You see, by faith, having been baptized into Christ, you're a child of God. You see, that puts you into the family of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 7, the Lord adds to the church daily such as are being saved. Oh, but uh, the church, yes, that thou mayest know how men ought to behave themselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. First uh, Timothy chapter 3, isn't it? Uh, verse 15, check it out. Check it out. The church is the family of God. Right. Then in the church of our Lord, I am a child of God. Why, certainly. God loves His children. Yes, children make mistakes. No question about that. Uh, sometimes uh, serious mistakes. No, but being a child with a penitent heart, you can call upon God as your father. Outside the family of God, He's not your father. Say, two families on the earth, spiritually speaking, the family of God and the family of the devil. You're in one or the other. Satan is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 at verse 4. Oh, but when one by faith gives his life to the Lord, how does he do that? Well, in faith, he turns from the practice of sin and error. Upon an acknowledgment of that faith, he's buried with his Lord in baptism. Oh, then you come forth in the likeness of His resurrection, and the old body of sin is done away. That's correct. And you walk in newness of life. Uh, newness of life in what way? Under the protective custody of the blood of Christ. It's a wonderful thing. Yes, God has the power to make a stand. There's no question. Now, I need to stay even existence to do His will. I love Him, and it is the love of God that we keep His commandments. You know what John said, 1 John 5, verse 3? Uh, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. So endeavoring to walk with the Lord, I read and study His Word regularly. I seek conscientiously, sincerely to put it into practice. Oh, then I'm, I'm free from sin. Oh, there's no question about that. Yeah, but that's conditional. I say. Oh, I remember that Paul said very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning verse 18, where he said, The word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, but unto us who are saved, it's the power of God. For it is written, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise. Or in the discernment of the discerning will I bring to naught. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For seeing that in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom knew not God, it was God's good pleasure through the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. Uh, seeing the Jews ask for signs and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Oh, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto Jews a stumbling block, unto Gentiles foolishness, but unto those that are called Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh, for the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Or the weakness of God is stronger uh, than man. Behold your calling, brethren. Not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. For God chose the foolish things uh -huh, to bring to naught the things that are wise. God chose the weak things that He might bring to naught the things that are strong. And God chose the base things and the things that are despised, yea, and the things that are not, that He might bring to naught the things that are. Why? Verse 29 that no flesh should glory in His sight. You see, when you're saved from sin, you'll be saved by faith. Faith makes itself manifest in doing what the Lord said. Have you ever noticed that many of the blessings provided by the Almighty are contingent upon foolishness? You ever thought about that? Oh, foolishness in the mind of man. I say. Uh, that's uh, that <laughs> Joshua covered to the high-walled, well-fortified, armed city of Jericho. Right. What did God tell him? <laughs> Form your men, and he gave the order, of course. 
March around the city one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, march around seven times. Let the priests blow long on the ram's horns. The people give a great shout and the walls will fall down flat. Who ever heard of taking a city like that? Nobody. Nobody. You'll try it. It won't work. It's out of the question. Somebody says, well, that's foolish. Right. Work perfectly. Work perfect. Why? Joshua did what God said. And God puts it in terminology so that the only reason you do it is faith. Because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that just, you just can't... Uh, people of Israel bitten by the deadly vipers. Uh, Numbers 21, 4 through 9. You're familiar with that. The remedy? Brass snake on a pole in the middle of the camp. And God said, if a man looks to the servant of brass, he'll live. Oh, they were dying like flies. And many of them already did. And others right at the point of death. What in the world would looking at a brass snake have to do with curing snake bite? Nothing. Nothing. Well, then, then why did God put it in that terminology? Because on that basis, there's only one reason you look. It's called faith. Same thing. Right? I have remission of sins as a child of God. When? Oh, to believers, Peter said, repent you and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, unto the remission of your sins. Acts 2.38. That's where it's Well, somebody says, what could, you know, being dipped in the water have to do with the remission of sins? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Absolutely. You can't put it on paper and figure it out to save your life. <laughs> Why would you do it? It's called faith. Faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Friends, the promises of the gospel include freedom from sin. All I need to do is walk by faith. If faith cometh of hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Order my life by thus saith the Lord. That's the way you show your love for God. Yeah, indeed. Oh, but then uh, there is another promise uh, of the gospel also. Uh, that's the power to serve. Uh, somebody says, just a minute, preacher, that's not, uh, that's not much of a blessing, the, the power to serve. Oh, sure it is. Do you remember when God uh, put Adam and Eve in beautiful Eden? I mean, everything is perfect. Everything is essential to their well-being, ready at hand. It's, it's just, what was it God said to Adam? Oh, he said, dress and keep the garden. Well, someone says, I knew there'd be a catch. I mean, uh, uh, catch, friends. Have you ever thought about the most miserable creature on earth? Well, let me tell you who he is. He's an able-bodied man that has nothing to do. A miserable wretch. Oh, God knows that responsibility is the stabilizing force of our lives. Adam, man, you don't just flip through the garden. Really, hey, slow down enough to take note. Does that bush need trimming? Is that uh, in the right location? Uh, what about these animals uh, in here? And uh, they were subject to him, and he was their caretaker and uh, provider. Uh, responsibility. Yes, sir, the privilege or the power to serve. That's one of the promises of the gospel. Oh, yes. Uh, they that fear Jehovah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Verse 31, Isaiah chapter 40. There is something to do. And for that we are thankful to God. Oh, and the service that I render uh, is set forth in God's Word. Every scripture inspired of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction and in righteousness. And that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. So I need to read the book to find out how God would have me live, what I need to do, where I need to go. It's interesting. Oh, and I remember that Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee in the sight of God and of Christ Jesus, who shall judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Now, someone said, well, I'm not qualified, don't have the background, insufficient, educated, woo, 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 woo. No, no. Preach the Word. Sure, there is the verbal presentation of truth. That's, that's fine, and that needs to be done. Everyone doesn't do that. You see, we don't all do the same thing in the church. Church is the body of Christ made up of many members. Paul explains 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. We understand that. We don't all do the same thing. Oh, but uh, we do the same thing in the sense that our thought, our speech, our conduct, our associations all encourage men to walk 
with the Lord. We thus represent Jesus Christ wherever we go, with whomever we may be associated. In our speech, in our conduct, <laughs> we represent Jesus Christ. And that's <clears throat> one of the frailties of the old human frame. <clears throat> that uh, throat doesn't always function properly. But we represent Christ wherever we go, whatever we may do. So then the privilege of serving, uh, the service rendered is set forth in the Word of God. But you know, <clears throat> there's another promise of the gospel. Do you recall verse 28, Romans chapter 8? Paul said, uh, All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are the called according to His purpose. Oh, but, but uh, somebody says, now just, just a minute, preacher, uh, you'll have to qualify that uh, expression, all things. Uh, no, no. You can take it at face value. All things work together for good to them. That'll... Well, someone says, preacher, I know many things that happen to good people that are not good at all. Oh, you're looking at the physical aspects of life, the physical realm. Right. Well, if you will drop down to verse 31, you'll understand more about what Paul is talking about. What shall we say to these things? Uh, if God is for us, who is against us? And it doesn't really matter who's against you if God is for you. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall not he also with him freely give us all things? If God gave Jesus to provide for my salvation when I was a sinner, uh, can I limit his giving, his goodness toward me in other areas of life? Why, certainly not. It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Jesus Christ who died, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, anguish, nakedness, famine, feral, sword, etc.? No, no. Paul said, we're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Why, friends, all of these things, have, that those things are terrible. The afflictions of this life and the very fact that you seek to serve the Lord brings persecution. You, you, you're subject even to martyrdom uh, in serve. Well, yes, uh, no question about it. Well, somebody says, uh, how is that good? Well, oh, he said, uh, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, in Christ, he said, we're more than conquerors. More than conquerors in death? Why, certainly. What was it Paul said, Philippians 1, verse 21? And for me to live is Christ. Uh, to die is gain. That's what life's all about. No, no, it's not here. I'm only here for a few seconds uh, by comparison with eternity. I'm here for a very brief period. Oh, and I didn't bring this and I won't take it. I live in the Lord's world. And He provides my needs uh, every day. Why am I living? So that I can live with Him eternally. You see, that's what life's all about. When we miss that, uh, that's what the Lord's talking about when He said, uh, what shall a man be profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Think about it. <clears throat> but there's another promise. That's the promise of eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 5, verse 11, the witness is this, that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Friends, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? God has given us grace, unmerited favor, the free gift of God, eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee the crown of life. Revelation 2, verse 10. Uh, the Lord made that uh, very, very clear. But friends, that's conditional. It's, uh, it's up to me. I remember that Paul reasoned of righteousness, self-control, the judgment to come with Felix the governor, Acts chapter 24, verse 25. You remember what Felix said. Oh, go thy way for now, Paul. When I have a convenient season, I'll call the answer never convenient. Never convenient. It's a matter of faith. It is a matter of commitment, the dedication of my thought, my speech, my conduct, my life uh, to the Lord and the accomplishment of His will. That's what it's all about. I must make the decision. You remember when Peter preached the death, burial, resurrection, the ascension and coronation of Jesus Christ at God's right hand in the second chapter of the book of Acts? No coercion was used. No, no. He laid the guilt of the crucifixion of Christ on their hearts. That's exactly where it belonged. 
Well, what happened? Oh, they were cut to the heart. They believed the message. So they cried out, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, Repent ye and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's for Greek preposition, ace, never used in retrospect, always looks forward. Thus the American standard says, Unto the remission of your sins. Well, now, who's going to do that? Well, uh, several thousand did there, uh, and I'm sure there were others who did not. It's a decision that you must make. You see, salvation from sin is conditioned upon my decision. I must decide. Adam and Eve in the garden had to determine, shall we eat of the tree of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Your choice. You are viewing Preaching the Gospel, a nationwide program brought to you by the Churches of Christ. They would love for you to come and visit their services. Why not come this next Lord's Day? Call us if you need assistance in locating a Church of Christ in your area. Maybe you would like to have your own copy of today's lesson on audio cassette. We offer these free of charge. Write down the number of today's program and contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120 or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia 30722. Oftentimes, we get requests from those of you who want to learn more and study further about the Bible. We have available to you, free of charge, a series of eight Bible lessons. These lessons will be mailed to your home, and you can complete them on your own time and at your own pace. Let us know if you're interested in this, and we would be happy to begin mailing these lessons to you. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And now, back to James. The Promises of the Gospel. Friends, beyond my ability to comprehend, really, we talked about some basic things, and these are promises of the gospel. Oh, but oh, the value of living the Christian life, the peace of mind, the happiness, the joy, the fulfillment, and knowing that we dwell literally in the hollow of God's hand. He said, I'll never forsake thee, neither will I any wise fail thee in every area of life. It is wonderful to be a child of God. Remission of sins, the power, the ability, and the privilege of serving, knowing that regardless of the way things go in this world, everything works together for good to those who love the Lord because eternity is in the offing. And then eternal life, uh, beyond my ability to describe the joys, the beauties, the blessings of eternity in the divine presence. How wonderful. Friends, read your Bible, put it into practice. May God help. You can reach Preaching the Gospel by calling 1-800-683-3120. Be sure and join us next week at this same time for Preaching the Gospel with James Watkins.